The 24 car, a legendary car number combo that even the biggest of sports normies can recognize. But there is something the 24 has not been able to do in its famed history. Win in the postseason era. Since 2004, the 24 car has missed out multiple times with Jeff Gordon on championships. But in 2023, in the next generation, the legacy would continue with the young William Byron. Though early on in this tale, Willie B certainly looked like a tough threat for the championship. Lift and right in the middle of three and four. Worst corner you could do it in. White flag gets official. I'm telling you, Bowman's in a really good situation here. Four wide for seven. Excuse me, Byron. And a big run for Bowman on the outside. They're going to split Truex, and it's three Hendrick Chevys to the front. Just like much of the day, around goes Almendinger, back of the pack, four or five cars spinning. We stay green as everybody gets out of the throttle. Here they come to the flag. Ooh. William Byron will okay. lead his 175th lap there. of the Byron will take the white flag. The next flag ends the race. Three wide per second. Keep an eye on his 45. Four tires, can he make it stick? Half to the bottom, half to the bottom 12, he got tight. William Byron. All right, Blaney second. Tyler Reddick boxed wow. in. Boxed in by the five. No place to go. And for the second week in a row, William Byron comes off oh, turn four. Checkered right. flag, Byron. While up in the amount of wins, Byron also was up in the amount of laps led, as even though he didn't win Dover or Richmond, he led over 100 laps in each, though this would not be without controversy. You see, after Phoenix, Byron was penalized 100 points. While Hendrick would appeal the penalty and win, well, NASCAR would again dock the 24 team, this time 60 points for a greenhouse violation after Richmond. The penalty was controversial and was not upended, as many saw this as NASCAR reasserting their dominance over someone that they saw sliding them. Regardless, the 24 team still would be locked in the playoffs, but now they needed to jump back up the playoff seating board. Helping this would come at Darlington when his teammate Kyle Larson and rival Ross Chastain wrecked each other for the win while Byron put himself in position to capitalize and in doing so was now in position to win. One more, five, five. White flag for Byron who came within two laps of winning here one year ago. Redemption time for him. Harvick five car lengths back, long gap to Elliott in third. What a um, comeback for Chase. Oh, what a hell of a day for him. Yeah, Chase Elliott, good turnaround, taking advantage of this end. William Byron had a good car all day, top five car. Here he is off the of floor, Mike. Rick Hendrick win 296. Yeah, William you. Byron wins the Goodyear 400. Now his next couple wins had a lot of space between them, and they were very different in just about every way. Between Darlington and Atlanta, he never finished below 13th. Then after the Atlanta win between then and Watkins Glen, he never finished above 14th. Either way, more wins would be added to the tally. The word on the top of the pylon checkered. That means that NASCAR has called the race due to weather. William Byron gets his fourth win of the season, his eighth career win overall, and all smiles for young William Byron as he was able to be in the right place at the right time when the weather came in. Marty. And chatting it over with Michael McDowell, who's also very happy that this thing rained out. Man, I don't even know where to start with your day. You said it was so much fun early on, then the penalty on pit road, then the spin. How did you guys come back and make this happen? Yeah, just teamwork. You know, honestly, I, I don't completely understand this one. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's a really good feeling. I've never had a, a rain uh, victory like this, but just thanks to Exalta Chevrolet, I mean, it's cool, man. I, I, we were through so much throughout the night, uh, spinning through the infield, destroyed the bottom of the car, dragging it around the yep. apron, trying to stay on the lead lap. And at, at that point, you just don't have the grip. So I was real edgy back in traffic, but uh, Rudy made a good call to pit there. Now shifts, doing everything he can just to be smooth and perfect on this final lap. Five wins in a row for Hendrick Motorsports at Watkins Glen. If he can make it to this last corner of the racetrack, and not only five in a, in a row for Hendrick, but a call to the, to the field. I'm ready for the championship battle. Let's roll. 
a career year already for William Byron as he comes up on the checkered flag and getting his first road course win. William Byron is going to win at the Glen. With his five wins, Byron would lead the series, and this is an important metric to lead heading into the playoffs as he was now the second seed. The first round was a bit of a cakewalk. Two top tens and all three finishes were in the top 15, and he just avoided everybody's troubles even in his bad races. He was easily in the round of 12. The worry with the second round is that it was the wildcard round. Texas being the overlooked one with craziness always happening, the Roval being a road course with crazy moments defining its history, and of course snuggled between them was Talladega. No matter who you are, a win in this round is imperative. Oh, you had to lift right there, Rick. Now we're side by side down the back straightaway contact. Here comes Byron to the inside, three wide. Three wide for the lead. Now William Byron to the inside, barely, right up to barely, the back barely, bumper barely, of the 23. Barely, Wallace a little loose. Here comes Byron. He clears him. Looking to secure a spot in the round of eight. William Byron, the 25-year-old, is going to win at Texas. He's into the round of eight. Now locked into the round of eight, Byron was virtually four races away from a championship win. At Las Vegas, he ran well with six stage points and a seventh place finish. The biggest issue was other success, though. Teammate Kyle Larson would win the race, Bell and Hamlin scored more points or matched him, and entering Miami, the gap was only now nine over Christopher Bell. But with that race came opportunity, again. While Bell would win, Blaney ran second as well. The two JGR teammates of Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. had imploded. Within two laps, each of them had had their cars break. Hamlin's had a mechanical break that caused him to crash, while Truex had an engine lost. Entering Martinsville, Byron's fourth-place run at Homestead positioned him 30 points ahead of now Tyler Reddick at the fifth-place position. While not 100% safe, as long as Byron didn't run horribly during this race, he'd be pretty good to go. Well, that's not exactly how it'd go. Up front, Blaney and Hamlin dominated the day, and Truex was right with them. Byron, on the other hand, would run 20th to 25th for most of the afternoon. The 24 didn't get a single stage point, while the 11 and 12 got 19 apiece. There were points during the final stage that saw Byron desperate and out of the final four but the team would do just enough to get the car moving up to a clinching position. Add in those who had to pit in front of him, and he would limp into the final four with a 13th place run. And, well, it looked like a blip on the radar after qualifying for Phoenix. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen. William Byron has won the pole at Phoenix. With the pole, Byron was the man to beat in stage one, and he led 93 of the opening 112 laps. But the final 200 saw it become more competitive and much more nail-biting for 24 fans. By the end of stage two, he wasn't even close to the lead. He was fourth position on the racetrack, and he still led the remaining title contenders with 125 laps left. But the final stage saw the fading of this team become complete. Both Blaney and Larson would make it past the 25 four and settle it among themselves for the most part in this long run during the race and while they had a shot after the final caution as the crew got him ahead of the 12 the 24 car was just too far gone at this point byron would finish fourth on the afternoon but third of his championship four guys much like jeff gordon the best season in the sport would not be rewarded the season championship. That makes many wonder, what if the championship wasn't decided by just a one race finale? What if the team kept the car at Phoenix running up front and well and stayed up on adjustments? What if in 2023, William Byron captured his missing ring?